In 1775, the Continental Congress created the Chaplain Corps. Under the command of General George Washington, each soldier was required to attend worship service every Sunday. While other armies advanced on their feet, Washington's troops advanced on their knees. It's time for the Chaplain's Report with Caleb Colquitt on tactics. And for today's Chaplain's Report, I have to talk about something that I've been going through myself because I think it's important and I also think that, or I hope at least, that some of you will be able to take something from this and benefit from it. Because the truth is, I've been struggling with the sin myself here recently. And I have learned something from my back and forth of the sin. It's not the first time I've struggled with it. Uh, Lord knows that, that this is something that a lot of men struggle with, but it, it's something that I've had a real problem with here recently. I've been struggling with the sin of lust. And I, I know that I shouldn't. I know that I'm past the age where this should be something that should be a real thorn in my side. But just to be honest with you, it's something that I do find a great deal of difficulty in. But for a while, I had been doing a lot better. I'd gotten to the point where I didn't think about it hardly at all. But recently, I, I kind of had a relapse, and I noticed that that relapse coincided with something else in my life. And that was when I got really busy with these two new jobs, doing the radio thing and, and also working at Faulkner, I got so busy that I started neglecting my daily Bible study and my daily prayer time. And... I noticed that the less time that I had to focus on those things, the more likely I was to fall into this particular sin. And I don't think that that's a coincidence. I'm not saying it was the only factor, but I think it was a major factor. And I was reminded of a verse in 1 Peter 5, 8-9, through 9, that really kind of drove this point home, where Peter says, Be of a sober spirit, be on alert. Your adversary the devil prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. But resist him, firm in your faith, knowing that the same experiences of suffering are being accomplished by your brethren who are in the world. There's a lot of application to this very practical wisdom, but I'm going to touch on at least one tonight. Why do you think it is that the greatest trick the devil ever pulled was convincing people he didn't exist. It's because if you don't believe the devil is real, you have no reason to be on your guard for him. I mean, I don't spend my time wrapping myself in crosses and garlic because I think that vampires are going to show up at my doorstep because I don't believe they exist. I say, you know, reason to defend myself from them because they are not real. The devil is a different animal. He convinced people that he wasn't real, and that made his job so much easier. Because if you're not a person that has a biblical worldview and goes through this life not believing that you are engaged constantly in a spiritual battle, you're a lot more likely to be killed when you're not on your guard in the field. It's a lot more likely that you will fall in battle if that is the case. And that's why I think it is so dangerous and the reason that this verse talks about vigilance being the key. You'll see some of the older, the older translations use vigilance. I think that this translation is fine. Be of a sober spirit and be alert. In other words, we have to prepare for this. We have to be on our guard, alert, aware, sober, Knowing what's going on around is having some kind of spiritual situational awareness to our surroundings. And when we neglect to read our Bibles, when we neglect to pray, when we neglect to have fellowship with fellow Christians, that guard starts to drop. Because we're no longer preparing ourselves for the task at hand. To use an, an analogy here, and I know that we're in the midst of football season right now. 
a lot of football games are decided before either team makes it to the stadium through preparation. You see, the team that knows their opponent the best, the team that is aware of what their opponent is likely to do or unlikely to do, and train and condition themselves to be ready for that contest, is often the one that winds up victorious. Now, maybe a team doesn't have to do much preparation. Maybe it's one of these teams where it's a, a really powerful Power 5 conference team ag against a little community college, and they don't have to prepare all that much, and they can rely on natural ability. But that's not very often the case. And sometimes, even then, one of the smaller schools can look up and wind up beating you if you're not adequately prepared. It's the same thing when a fighter goes into a ring. A lot of times, that fighter, the one who's better prepared, who knows his opponent better, and who has prepared in advance through strength and conditioning and training, the one who is most ready for the fight usually winds up winning. Not every time, but most of the time. And I think that the spiritual fight, the spiritual welfare that we're engaged in here is the same way. To use the Bible's analogy, if you were in a forest and you knew that there was a hungry lion wandering around looking to devour you, wouldn't you get ready? Wouldn't you make some kind of mental and physical preparation to combat him? I mean, you lay a trap or you dig a hole that you can hide something. You do something to make sure that you're not at a disadvantage with this lion. And what's important to note about a lion versus a human? A lion is far more likely to triumph. He has every advantage. He's stronger, faster, more powerful, has claws and teeth, which humans don't. And so in that sense, we are made fully aware of the fact that the devil is better prepared than us. He has more natural ability than us. Remember, he has been doing this for a really long time. He knows how to entice humans. He's been doing it since the fall of man. We understand this. We know that he's out there and that he's a lot smarter than us and a lot more experienced than us. And so if we fail to prepare, we're going to lose most of it. If we wait up until the time that we are actually tempted to start thinking about temptation, we're probably going to lose. We're probably going to fall into whatever temptation it is that is being dangled in front of us at the moment. And so what we have to do is plan ahead of time, know what we're going to do, know how we're going to react, and be able to be on the lookout to avoid temptation when we can and be ready for it when we can't. When we have to go through a time of temptation, we're aware of it and we know what we're up against. And we're still not going to succeed every time. But the point is we stand a lot better chance against that lion if we've given it some forethought, some preparation. We have made ourselves ready for that contest. And I want you to look at the bottom part of this. I want you to look at the, the part of it that happens in verse 9. There is also strength in numbers. Where it talks about at the tail end of verse 9 there, it says, knowing that the same experiences of suffering are being accomplished by your brethren who are in the world. Do you really want to stand up against a lion by yourself? I don't. When you face that temptation, when you face the devil head on, don't you want to have somebody there with you? Even if they're not there with you in the moment, they at the very least were there to help you prepare the trap to prepare yourself for that event. That you've got some help going on there. And of course the Lord is there to help you. And of course he is the one that ultimately allows us to be victorious. But the point is, Paul is, or sorry, Peter is pointing out here that your brethren are a big part of that. And notice how he phrases that. He says the experiences are being shared. In other words, don't just rely on your brethren because there is strength in numbers, even though there is. Also rely on them because there's a good chance that other Christians have experienced this. There's a good chance that your brethren have gone through exactly what you're going through. Lean on them. Trust them. And have them give you advice in how they've overcome things, and that'll help you in the future. Because brothers and sisters, if we're not prepared and we're standing alone, we're there without our preparation, without God, and without our brothers, I'm just going to be honest with you, we don't stand much chance. 
not against a lion. And so if we remember that the devil is a lot stronger, a lot smarter, and a lot more experienced than us, hopefully that will motivate us to remember to mentally and physically prepare ourselves to put on the whole armor of God and to make ready for that contest. And that a great way to help us prepare is by staying in communion and in communication with our brothers and sisters that know what that fight is like. Stay the course, friends. Now, y'all know that I am a big believer in personal liberty, and that means I think that you should be free to decide for yourself whether or not you like this video and subscribe to the Tactics YouTube channel. However, I will say this. You know who else never subscribed to my channel? Hitler. So the way I see it, you have two options. You can either like this video and subscribe to the Tactics YouTube channel, or you can be like Hitler. Totally up to you.